Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The DRF Bet Saturday race of the day for January the 20th is the Pasco Stakes from Tampa Bay Downs. If you sign up to DRF Bets right now, you can access a $200 free bet. No deposit required. All you have to do is go to drf.com forward slash join and use the promo code FREEBET09. Now let's take a look at the field of three-year-olds going seven furlongs in the Pasco, perhaps a stepping stone to Tampa Bay three-year-old races like the Sam F. Davis and the Tampa Bay Derby. You can head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com, download free Formulator Pass performances for this race, and handicap along with us as we take the field in post position order. Matt, the number one, he hate me, showed some professionalism, showed a strong late kick in both starts at two, but we have not seen him since June. Yeah, that's got to be a major concern in here. What he did at Belmont and the Trema, I thought was really, really strong. I know he didn't beat much that day, but he did it the right way. He came on the widest part of the track now having said that that day at Belmont inside was dead so he was on the better part of the racetrack but if you kind of were trying to project forward you thought boy he was going to be a serious two-year-old and then he was gone and this is going to be his first start back seven eighths off the bench never easy that's not easy the seven eighths off the bench breaking from an inside post which can be an intimidating place for inexperienced horses uh, he got sick after the Tremont and I think these connections did the right thing they gave him time to grow up you're right in the Tremont very professional just rolling over the top of those horses while being on the best part yep. of the track plus he got a nice trip there was yep. some hitting going on in yeah. front of him three four horses battling out for the lead he Hate Me sat by himself. He Hate Me has Horatio DePaz in his corner. Here's a formulator fact. Limited positive, 50% from eight starters over the past year when you have a last out three-year-old winner on dirt. An intriguing horse to be sure, but three to one on the morning line. I want to find a price in here. I, I think he's a, a major threat in this spot. I just don't know at that kind of value if he actually does represent value. Another impressive two-year-old coming off of a relatively long layoff is the number two Mind Trap, who made his debut and won an only star on July the 15th over the synthetic surface at Arlington Park. He won by a country mile, and he's been gone. Yeah, he's been gone for a long, long time. That field that he beat that day, he's come back very, very poor. Now, you have to wonder with a couple things here. Why has he been gone for as long as he has? He's going to show up on dirt for the first time. Now, he's been at Tampa for quite some time, so I don't know how much of a concern that will ultimately be. Uh, he gets Lasix for the first time. The interesting thing, there's a major discrepancy between the buyer speed figure and the Timeform U.S. rating. Timeform had it very, very slow. Buyer had a very, very competitive figure in here. If you believe Buyer, he certainly fits in here. If you believe Timeform, he's got a lot to do. He wasn't as professional as he hate no. me, who does everything right from a mechanic standpoint. Mind Trap got a great trip, just like he hate me did. He just shot on through along the inside when a hole opened up, stayed on his left lead all the way down to the wire, and like he hate me, has to go seven yep. off the layoff. You have to wonder if he might need a race. The three is his name is Sue, who has won twice in his career, but both of those wins came when he was offered for a tag. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he's a little bit class compromised in here. Maybe he doesn't quite fit with the rest of these runners in this but you're going to have a number of horses coming out of the inaugural. I don't think any of them ran exceptionally, but I don't think any of them ran poorly. And there's really only one horse out of that race. If I had to take one, we'll get to him in a little bit. It's not this horse. Now, the horse that finished best of the inaugural that is back in the Pasco is the number four, a Razi like move. And we're used to seeing these two-year-old, early three-year-olds with big speed. A Razi like move is a closer. His only win came for a $40,000 tag. Yeah, you got to wonder a little bit about class. You also have to wonder his running style at Tampa Bay down seven-eighths of a mile. It's been very, very helpful to be forwardly placed. So maybe that puts him up against it. And you brought up that sort of closing running style. I I'm going to be curious to see. I don't think the seven-eighths is a problem, but I wonder does he even want even more distance than this? Does he want to try two turns? Mind Trap's only win came on synthetic, driven by history, ran seven times over the tapita surface at Presque Isle Downs and compiled an enviable record. Four wins, three runner-up efforts. He's won his last three races, including a stake. Do you think he can get to dirt? I don't really know, to be honest with you. It's kind of a crapshoot in here. He's getting Lasix for the first time. I'm just fascinated to see a horse that ran seven times as a two-year-old between July and October and then didn't run again. It seems like, yeah, okay, you see a couple of starts and stops as far as the workout tab is concerned. Maybe he's this good. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's ready. Maybe he's not. I like the fact that he's one going two turns, also one going shorter. His last two races, he's been very, very awkward. He's jumped a shadow or a track or something along those lines because his final stretches, they were a little bit wonky. But, I mean, again, there's just something about a horse that runs consistently as a two-year-old that I'm, I'm intrigued with. Trainer Kathleen O'Connell is just having a remarkable Tampa mm -hmm. Bay Downs meeting, winning at close to a 30% clip. And she has limited but very positive data, as we see from this formulator fact, with second-time starting debut winners in dirt 
Kurt Sprints is three-year-olds, 25%, 352 ROI. She gets a debut horse to come back second time out. They still fire. That being said, this horse won in slow time against weak horses. You know, I, I will be very, very surprised if we're adding to that stat for Kathleen O'Connell. This horse, you want to talk about other horses being class compromised. This horse is going to end up seeing some animals that he's never considered in his life. Morning line favorite is the number seven, World of Trouble. Antonio Gallardo takes the mount. This horse just ran away and hid in his debut over a wet track at Gulfstream Park, won by 14 lengths, 77 buyer speed figure. That convinced Michael Dubb, a prominent owner, to purchase this horse privately. And World of Trouble ran really well last time out in a stakes race for Florida Breds, earning an 88 buyer speed figure. You can say that was kind of the classic example of won the battle, lost the war, where he did all the dirty work, put all the other speeds away. The thing that I was most concerned with, his lead change was very, very awkward. And when he did that, he actually brushed into the inside rail. Now, I like the fact that he's run well at 7-8, so we know that's not going to be a problem for him. Uh, Mike Watchmaker brought up a really interesting point for the weekend warrior. 88 buyers, the highest last out in the field. The winner that day, Sutosh, came back to win next out, but regressed considerably to a 77. He's a little bit unsure about that buyer, and if you believe that it's potentially 10 points slower than what the 88 would suggest, then he doesn't have any real edge on this field. My major concern is we haven't seen this horse in about four and a half months, and the hurricane down in mm -hmm. South Florida over the, the latter part of 2017 just compromised this horse's training, and the new trainer, Jason Service, decided to back off a little bit. This horse has speed, however, and the time form U.S. pace projector believes that we will know the seven world of trouble early, perhaps scrimmaging with the nine twin farms, but as you said, you want to be forward in these seven furlong races at Tampa Bay Downs. And you know what? I just kind of look at it and say off the bench, I'd imagine he's going to be keen, ready to go, feeling good. I think they're going to send him, and I think if you're on the, if you're a fan of the nine, in a perfect world, you sit just off of him and let him go and hope that that layoff gets to him. Ohio bred Awaken is the number eight by Kentucky Derby winner Super Saver. This horse has not been off the board from five lifetime starts, is a stakes winner sprinting, a stakes winner around two turns. And really, the only time he faced open horses, far from embarrassed by a good three-year-old in Bal Harbor. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the sapling, it was sneaky, was one of the most productive two-year-old races that we had coast-to-coast -coast last year, where you had five next out winners, including Bal Harbor. Cow uh, Cowboy Karma is not a bad one either. The interesting thing is this horse is going to be making the turn back in distance. The problem is, to me, I don't really consider it a turn back because he'd been gone for this long. I mean, there's a difference between a turn back after a three or four week layoff. It's another thing when we're talking three or four months. Twin Farms is the number nine. Bad good, bad better pattern so yeah. far. Maybe a bad one's coming for Twin Farms, but his win two starts back at Keeneland. I know that pace held together, but this horse was getting bumped and bounced around down towards the rail and showed absolutely no quit whatsoever. Yeah. It was a really game performance. I don't know what happened in the street sense. That was just awful. Last time out in the inaugural, let's talk about that race because he made a, a bold turn move right at the odds on favorite. I think that horse is a pretty good one. He turned Twin Farms away. I'm, I'm very, very intrigued to find out when and if or where we end up getting tricks to do coming back for Arnaud Delacour because I think he's a stone cold runner. I don't know if he's going to be a distance horse or a sprinter, but he looks like he's the goods. This horse, Twin Farms, took a legitimate shot on him on the far turn and I think he paid the price. I think that's what cost him ultimately running second in there. I know it was only by a head. I kind of feel like had he not gone after the. He runs second. He runs second easily. The, d the difference here is how much different are we talking from a, a scenario where is the seven going to go and he's going to be forced to do the exact same thing and is he just, is, is it a combination of a little bit not talented enough but also you're going to have to do the dirty work to try to soften up that seven horse and then somebody else going to come get you. The 10 Trenton Traveler completes this field exiting a key off the turf edition of the grade three bourbon stakes where he was simply overmatched against horses like Tap Daddy who is now stakes placed. Uh, this horse uh, did some good things sprinting but against much weaker competition with light buyer speed figures and he's really hard to recommend. Yeah, the Jersey towns haven't been particularly strong but I also don't think they want to go a uh, route of ground. I think this is what he probably wants to do. I don't think he's good enough though. Let's take a look at our top selection selections for the Pasco race number eight. You're going to go driven by history. Boy, this horse, he likes to race. And you got to think that off this layoff, he is at least going to have the bottom of those seven races and he gets Lasix for the first time. Yeah, the distance is not a concern whatsoever. Now, the, the concern is, is he good enough? Can he handle dirt? The Lasix going on, great. The layoff is a bit of a concern. He's just the kind of horse. In a race where I don't have a super strong opinion, I like horses that like to go out and race and like to perform. 
I'll take a shot with him. Well, it's possible that the scenario you mentioned, the nine twin farms having a similar situation as last time, doing all the dirty work and leaving himself vulnerable late, that's a big possibility. I do think the tricks to do is a better horse than World 100%. of Trouble. Plus, World of Trouble has to go off that layoff that yeah. we mentioned. And if World of Trouble's a little bit short, going seven off the bench, maybe twin farms can emerge with the lead at the 316th pole, and he's got a couple of other layoff horses and horses that have been racing on synthetic behind him. He's eight to one, you're 10 to one on the line. We want prices. You're going five, seven, one, nine. I'm going nine, seven, one, five, in the $125,000 Pasco Stakes. If you're playing this nice Tampa Bay Saturday card from home, please consider DRF bets. When you sign up, you get a $200 free bet. No deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. And please use the promo code FREEBET09. Approximate post time for your Saturday DRF bets. Race of the day is 3.42 Eastern. Good luck.